Welcome to day three of the accountability series. We're three days in. We're three days in. What have I been successful at for the past few days? Protein for the first meal, and I've been having more fiber throughout my other meals. It's a win. It's a win. Today's task is to fix my room. If you really knew me, my room is always a mess. It's embarrassing. Don't look at me. And every time I try to fix it, I get distracted and do something else, and it's a cycle. But that's one of the things we're going to do. Today I'm going to talk about my meal prepping tips. Do 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 da 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 you always deserve to eat. Let's eat. So there's a difference between meal prepping and meal planning. Meal planning is essentially just listing down what you're gonna eat for a certain period of time. Meal prepping is actually preparing a certain amount of food for a certain amount of time. Both of them is usually done to lessen your stress around food. So if you feel like just planning it for the week is helpful, or you feel like preparing certain food items is helpful, you can choose what you want to apply and how you want to use it. Today we're gonna talk about meal prepping. Although a lot of the steps are pretty similar, the difference being the actual cooking part. So step one, this is the research phase. The research phase is essentially looking for recipes and inspiration. You can do this through Pinterest or through Instagram if you have any cookbooks at home. You can look through them and list down recipes that you want to try, recipes that you know how to make, or just food that looks intriguing for you. Make sure that the ingredients you see there are ones you like and it actually looks like something you would want to eat. Because sometimes we're putting in salads that we don't even like. This list is not permanent and it can be be forever changing. But once you have your initial list, we can go to our next step. Remember that andoks from the other day? We're gonna make it into a chicken spread. We have isolated the chicken. Now we're going to mash it or shred. Isolation <laughs> is no good for me. I'm also gonna chop some onion for a little bit of anti-inflammatory nutrients and fiber. Then I'm just gonna mix it up with mayonnaise. And then you basically meal prep a chicken spread. You can have it any time of the week. I've got my banana for some fiber. I've got my toast with pimiento, my chicken spread, sardo bread. Mmm, that is loaded with protein. Mm-hmm. We get our bread from Van Leuven. They have really good bread and other pastries. Step number two in meal prepping is to choose the days and the schedule that will be most realistic for you to meal prep. So this would be asking the questions of how many days a week do you feel like you are not going to have energy to cook and how many days a week do you want food already prepared versus ordering out. For example, I would see myself batch prepping two to three times a week and definitely not doable for me if I am batch prepping during the weekend. So this is something to take note of and consider so that you can really plan it into your schedule in a realistic way. Also, meal prepping doesn't mean you have to make all of your meals for the whole week already. It can be preparing for three days or even just making small things like spreads and dips and sauces that make it easier for you to cook throughout the week. Yeah, that's all I got for now. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna organize my room instead of just putting things away. So it's a no need focaccia, and we're just gonna put this in the fridge, and then tomorrow, I'm gonna bake it. It looks like cottage cheese. Mm. <laughs> it's lunchtime, and I don't know what to eat. Let's raid the fridge. Oh wait, I did meal prep my coleslaw, so now I just need some protein. Thanks past me. I couldn't decide what to eat, but I do have my coleslaw, so I'll have that with rice. And for protein, I'm just gonna do these Bounty Fresh Chicken Nuggets. But when I opened it up, look at this beautiful picture. Very, very nice. It looks like this. It's like breaded and orange. I don't know if this is really what it was supposed to be. I also want to note that I do have dessert, like a little bit of something sweet after most of my meals. I just forget to vlog it. <laughs> 
we have some chocolates that was sent to jail last year. Old chocolates. <laughs> the white caramel. Because this looks like the dark chocolate. White caramel? It just tastes like um, chocolate was like mixed with the caramel, no? Toffee nut. Toffee. You know the toffee nut? I know. Bye. Like that. Mm, yummy! Dark chocolate. Dark. Dark. This one tastes like, you know, the powder? Yeah. It just tastes like that. <laughs> It's supposed to be like fine chocolate. It's like fine chocolate. <laughs> it's a little too dark for me. This is latte caramel. Also tastes like the Tofu one. <laughs> it kind of tastes like the same. If you guys want to get the be a fine chocolate, I personally would not suggest it. Step three is to gather all of your ingredients. Pro tip, after you've chopped your garlic, let it rest for like 10 to 15 minutes because then you're going to let the powerful phytonutrient allicin really build. Rest ka lang dyan, ilam kong pagod ka. Buy made tiramisu! It's like a hack tiramisu. Because they just use Biscoff. It's just it's Biscoff, vegan. espresso, and vegan milk. It's a vegan tiramisu. Ooh! Nice and firm. I'm not a fan of coffee though. The coffee's kind of strong, but it's still good. This would essentially be setting aside that time of the week where you are going to cook your meals. If you feel like it's too complicated to prep every single thing right away, you can always start with little things that you feel will help. Plus, prepping all of your food at once can be a food safety risk, but also can lessen the chance that you're gonna eat it because if you see it all the time, you're kinda like, mm, I don't think I wanna eat it. But I do love it when I'm so tired and I don't know what to eat, and then I remember I have something ready. We have our adobo ready and prepped. It's a little bit salty though, so I will have to add something that is a little bit more acidic as I eat it, and of course, rice. Just make sure to cool it before you cover and store. I usually get asked like, how long are you supposed to store food? It really depends on the food item, but I would give it like two to three days maximum for it to have the best quality, food safety, all of those things. That's why for me, ideally, I would cook every two to three days, something that I could eat for a few meals to make it easier on myself. Ideally, we're not yet there. We just went on a walk again around the village, a little bit of a 30 minute walk, showered, clean. I'm gonna eat my dinner, which is my meal prep. But technically it's not meal prep because I'm eating it on the same day. I have to use some black rice and my adobo. I prefer white rice, but we don't have any white rice right now. For extra fiber and some probiotics, I'm gonna be adding this Kimzi homemade kimchi. I'm actually not a big fan of kimchi, but somebody sent me this from Instagram. I was like, okay, I'll try it. And though it's kind of spicy and still pretty intense, I do have a little bit here and there for the probiotics. So the final step slash tip to meal prepping is to take notes. Take notes of what went well, what didn't go well, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you can improve upon. Because I think a lot of people stop with their meal prep or their meal planning journeys because it just didn't work out and then that's it. But if you figure out what went wrong and how you can adjust it, like we always say, curiosity over judgment, it's gonna give you a lot more chance of success. I meal prepped like a big batch of sinigang. It's probably for like five meals, but by the third meal, I was like, I don't wanna eat this anymore. So that gives me insight on batch prepping too much food. One of my clients also mentioned how when they have meal prepared in the refrigerator and they're thinking about eating it, they have less desire for it. And so these are these things that are good to know. I'm gonna finish my food. I think we're pretty much done for tonight. We're just gonna watch some things to cool down, chill up. Day three of the accountability series has come to an end. If you've reached this point, comment below what you've been able to do the past few days. Let's keep going on this journey. I will see you in the next vlog. Until then, don't forget, you always deserve to eat. The video's over, but that doesn't mean you have to go. You can still subscribe or watch another video. Thanks for watching.